Hi, this is Sherry Hayes from MomDelights.com, and I've been talking to you about using the McGuffey's Readers for homeschooling, which is one of my favorite subjects. I love using the McGuffey Readers. It was just like, um, when I started using those, they were an answer to prayer, an answer to a lot of problems I was having with my children. Now, today I want to talk about the other books that you can get in the Eclectic, Reedy, uh, Eclectic Education series that were done during the late 1880s and also the earlier ones that were done with the McGuffey readers originally in the 1830s and also some other materials that are other vintage materials that you can include in your homeschooling. Vintage materials are usually of higher quality in the um, in their scope and in the, their content and in their mechanics they are also usually cheaper. You can, there are many more sources for them that are cheaper than the modern textbooks. Now you, of course, have to supplement with modern things, you know. Um, but vintage books will add dimension to your homeschooling that nothing else will. Anyway, so first I'd like to talk to you about the Harvey's Grammars that are, now Mott Media puts these out. As you can see, um, this one is the elementary. This is what they call revised English grammar. Okay, I like this one, and as you can see, this one has been used. The kids have kind of, you know, put markings in here. This one right here is pristine because we don't use it. All right, the reason we don't use this one is because this is like, you know, maybe college graduate level of English. <laughs> you probably wouldn't need this too much. Um, really is maybe the first lessons would be okay. This one I use a lot, and Mott Media actually has answer booklets to go with these, both of them, and I have my children do that. Now, I don't start my children in grammar until they can read and write pretty well already. The McGuffey's take, you know, take care of a lot of the basic sentence mechanics and things that they need, but, you know, in order to understand grammar, the whys and the wherefores, I like to put them through one year of this. Now, just, I'll tell you about what I do before this, though, in just a minute. Okay, also, uh, Mott Media, they sell this. This comes with the set. This is a speller, and you'll notice this is pristine, too, <laughs> because I don't use this one, either. This one is kind of, well, this wasn't written by McGuffey himself. This was written by a younger brother. Uh, William Holmes McGuffey didn't write this. This is Alexander H. McGuffey wrote this, and it is just not as well put together as the revised. This is kind of, I don't know, it's based on something funky. This right here, however, is one of my favorite things. It begins at the beginning. You know, you have the alphabet and you have, of course, the phonics sounds. And then it goes, it starts with just the basic two-letter, three-letter words, short vowels, and this is where little kids begin. You can use this as a phonics lesson to help them have reading practice. Um, many, many interesting things you can do here. Now, it moves on, of course, and it has the diacritical marks for pronunciation. You can take those off and write them yourself. Yourself, excuse me. Um, it has dictation, and it has, now see all my markers up here, I have all kinds of things marked. <laughs> it also has lessons about homophone, homophones. Homophones are those words that are spelled differently but sound the same. Such as, how about earn and earn, to earn money or an earn for a person. Hmm. Or to die, or die for your clothing. See? Two different dies spelled differently, sounding the same. So here's a lesson that is homophones. And they have the, of course, the um, definitions next to the words, which makes it really fun. What I did with this is I actually formulated a game that my kids could play. It's when they had eight learners all together, and I would pair them off in more or less um, equal learning levels, and I would, I had rules, and they would use, I had a whole bunch of these printed off um, from 
think I got it from Google Books online and also um, Dollar Home School offers this. And um, I printed them off and had them comb bound and then I had them use these back and forth and I've forgotten the rules. I don't know if they learned a lot of spelling, <laughs> but it was fun. Family togetherness, right? You know, one of those experiments we do. <laughs> but anyway, they would be great to make lists off of or just use to like um, familiarize. They are also written to, these word lists are written in such a way that they concentrate on certain spelling areas or phonics areas at a time. They concentrate. And in, like I said, I have visual and auditory um, difficulties, or my, my children do. And so I have to reintroduce, reinforce as many avenues as I can so that they'll, they'll, it'll sink in. You know, you can't expect a child to know something that's, that's they've only seen once or twice. It's just like anything that adults do. We, um, we tend not to remember things we see or only once we think about what they do with commercials, right? I mean, you say the same commercial over and over and over and over and over again until you can sing the jingle whether you like to or not, right? Well, that's kind of what you have to do with these basic skills. You have to reintroduce and reintroduce and put it before their eyes and have them hear it and see it and experience it, immerse them in it, and eventually it just becomes part of who they are and they don't have to work as hard. I think sometimes we expect them just to get it. Don't you get it? <laughs> that and they don't. Okay, so going on, like I was mentioning, um, if you, uh, Google Books is a great place to find all these vintage things. And, you know, if you have a tablet, you know, of course you can go to Google Play and you can get the um, app for just reading the books on your tablet. And I do that a lot with my kids. Um, if I need, if they need re extra reading practice at their level, there are so many vintage readers um, I like the ones that have like the fables and the fairy stories that they're familiar with and when they read them like Billy, uh, Three Billy Goats Gruff and um, uh, um, The Three Little Pigs and when they're first starting reading those stories are so familiar because I've read them to them over and over again. I'm a great believer in reading uh, nursery rhymes and fairies and fables, uh, uh, fair, uh, fairy tales and fables to your children over and over again. They just seem to never tire from them and so when they read these stories, they're so familiar that it's not as much work and they actually have more enjoyment when they're just at a basic reading level. Okay, but you can also, now this is one thing I've done, I've actually had these comb bound. You can go to any office store, you can print them off. You don't even have to have a duplexing printer. You can just print on one side and cut it. And you can have these comb bound. I think it costs a dollar or two a piece. Comb binding is the cheapest. They don't last as long, they break and stuff, but, you know, if you're just going to use a little bit or you just want to try it out to see if it'll work for you, this is a good way to go. Okay, um, I also wanted to mention, uh, I've, I've done a lot of binding these books using a perfect binding method, just a second. And I've done, actually, I've gotten, Dollar Home School has a lot of these uh, materials on CDs that you can purchase and it's pretty cheap for how much you'll use them. Um, this uh, right here, however, let's see, th this is an alternate reader that I got from Dollar Homeschool CD. And what I did was I had a lot of children using my McGuffey readers at the same level and I thought, well, I don't want to go ahead and purchase a whole set or anything. I, I had the Dollar CD, so what I did was I um, used my duplexing printer and I printed um, double-sided 20 pages at a time, and there's a certain way you, you set it up. And then I um, took a long-arm staple. It's actually 20 pages like this is actually four physical pages. And then you um, use a long-arm staple, and you staple it in the middle, you fold it, and then you glue it. And I would cut a um, file folder to fit. This is a collared file folder, which makes it kind of fun. And I... Um, cut it to fit, I, I bent it and, you know, folded it, cut it to fit, and then I would glue each set into the middle. You can see where the glue is there, right there. And um, then it would, makes a book that, you know, it's just like a regular book. And it didn't cost me hardly anything to make. And then I went to clip art, etc. And I printed out some little pictures they had there. And, and I used um, Microsoft Publisher to make myself you know, the little labels and the spelling and stuff. And I use their clip art. So, uh, these 
I was able to use a lot. These are really, really fancy little things. There. Okay, this right here is uh, 50 Famous Stories Retold from James Baldwin. I actually got the material for this from the Gutenberg Project, which is another great resource for vintage books online. And I formatted it using uh, Word. And then I printed this out and did the perfect binding and used clip art, etc. So that's another option. Okay. Um, actually, also, um, there is a Living Books cu uh, curriculum. Uh, I had some downloads of the already formatted um, vintage books from them, and that's what this is, Historic Boys, Historic Girls. And so then I put that into this book. And also, like I said, there's Google uh, Books has an app, and also Kindle is a great place to go to find free vintage books that you can read a lot. I do not suggest that you try to do the McGuffey's on Kindle Books, especially the free ones. They don't have the illustrations. They're just not put together. They're not, they're not formatted correctly, and you'll be very frustrated. Okay, well, along with these books, I wanted to say that if you go to garage sales and thrift stores and used bookstores, you're going to find a lot of cool school books. Just a sec. And, of course, that's some of our favorite things to do for fun. So, also, people give you books. You know, they say, oh, you're homeschooling. I've got some old school books. Okay, you've gotten a lot of that stuff. So, what you're going to find is that um, you can look at these and say, they are terrific. Don't be afraid to use them. If they work for you, use them. You don't have to have the latest and the greatest. Sometimes the latest and the greatest is just overpriced fluff. Why not use the old books? Look at this book. My favorite book for teaching beginning math. My mom got a book, a box of books from a neighbor who is a retired teacher, and she said she heard you were homeschooling. She thought maybe you could use these. And I looked through and some of them, you know, not so much. I got a whole bunch of old readers, which were fun, you know, from the from the fifties and sixties. But this was the golden goose, I'm telling you. It's called Number Stories. It was from the forties and it has pictures. Uh, I mean, a story is about monkeys, and then it asks questions like, which is the biggest monkey? Which is the smallest? How many palm trees? Um, here we go. And it just introduces numbers in such a fun, sweet way. And it's, it's stories about monkeys and bears, you know, things little kids love. And, well, this is just one example. You probably won't be able to find this. I think you can find it like on Abe Books or something. But um, even if you can't find this particular book, there are other books like this out there that you would just stumble on them. You know, you just pray and the Lord just kind of throws things, puts things in your way and don't be afraid to use them. You might find something wonderful. Now, this book right here is still in print, but I found this at a thrift store, Little Visits with God. And I love to use this one for devotions with my children. Um, they are very short and very sweet, and they're, they're so appropriate for younger ages, but they have profound truths. It's not dumbed down. These aren't dumbed down little things. They are marvelous, um, and they always have scripture and prayer, and I just love them. And my, my little girls actually like it because they're so short. If we, you know, I sit with my older children, we have long discussions, and we, you know, and they're kind of like, no, 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 you know, but if we do this, and this, this one's about them, for them, and they like that idea. Okay, so, now, I wanted also, I promised I would show you about what I do before I do formal grammar in Harvey's. And this doesn't look really impressive. Um, I had some flowered paper, and I used it as a cover. That's the little label, Long's Language 2. There are 1, 2, 3, and 4 in accordance with the McGuffey readers. This was formulated for the eclectic education materials that were done in the 1880s by the co same company that did the revised McGuffey readers, okay? And um, they also did a lot of other things like math and everything, but today we're talking about mostly, I guess, language arts. This right here, what I've done is I just printed it straight on an 8.5 by 11. Uh, eight, yeah, from <laughs> the... Uh, Dollar homeschool CDs. And what I did was um, I give them a lesson a day. Now these are just basic, basic language understanding. Lesson one, this is the second level, remember. Copy these statements. How does each begin? How does each end? The stars shine. 
The grass grows in the field. The rainbow is beautiful. Cows are useful animals. Leather is made from hides. So what you're doing is you're, you're introducing them to the ideas of how sentences are made. They have capitals and they have periods. Pretty basic stuff. But you know what? Like I said, if you familiarize, and all the lessons are pretty much like that. They talk about questions. They talk about the agreement of is or are, um, you know, noun verb agreement, stuff like that. But they don't actually use the jargon. They just kind of talk about the idea and they give like, you know, some, uh, an exercise that takes maybe five minutes to do. Okay. And I'll show you my daughter's book that she's been using. I just like like with these uh, vintage books, you can take advantage of those 50 cent um, com composition books. And here you go. Workbook. Instant workbook. <laughs> Forget the, you know, $20. You know, when you look at those catalogs, you look online, you're saying, oh, I like the text, but I have to buy the workbooks with it. And I like this curriculum, but oh my goodness, the workbooks, I'm not, the kids are just going to, you know, what if you don't use the whole thing? And then you're stuck, aren't you? When you buy that $20 um, workbook and then... Let's say that halfway through it you go, oh, we're, I hate this. My kids hate this. But I paid 20 bucks for this. I've got to use it. Nah, nah, nah. What you do, 50 cents here. If you don't use it, you, you know, you go through, you don't like it, then guess what? You can, you, you can rip those pages out and use the rest for something else, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing lost. Um, so here's one. This is language. That was that same lesson I just read. It says, the stars shine, the grass in the field. So she's looking at this, and they asked her questions, and she's, so she's reading this, and she's saying, yeah, what, you know, she's looking. There's the second lesson, okay. It was a little bit longer. Remember, this is the second level. Now, the first level is a lot easier. Um, she has, oh, she decorated the first page. What do you think? Okay, here, let's see, that's one of the other lessons. But anyway, like I said, you don't want to start it like, you know, when your child's barely sounding up. You have to be reading a little bit better than that to do these. But they are self-directed at that point, which takes a little bit off of you. So they're still getting language, but you don't have to be slaving and laboring. Child, no, you see, it's not like that. See, that's what this whole thing is. It's gradual, you know. I don't know what it is about modern textbooks, but to me it's like, make this leap, make this jump, make this leap, make this jump. And lots of kids, they don't make leaps and jumps, okay? They have to go like this, see? Just really gentle, really slow, gaining steam. And my kids are like that. They need that. Okay, we're going to take and we're going to break things down, not to make you feel stupid, but so that you can gain confidence. You can be so confident in what you know that the next step and the next step and the next step are natural and they don't feel like okay this is like the difference between okay you know how there's a mountain you have to climb okay we build roads that go like this they go gently and they slope up like this or look at pike's peak okay i live at the foot of pike's peak there are two there are three ways you can go up you can take the train the the, the train that goes up right okay and you know that's easy you just sit there right but then for cars, they have this zigzaggy road, okay? And we have actually a famous race that uses this road. It's called the Pikes Peak Fall Climb. Anyway, so you, oh, um, hey, can you hear my clock? <laughs> okay, anyway, shall we wait and hear the chimes? You can tell what time of day it is here in a minute. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Here you go. There you go. One, two, three, four. It's going to be eight o'clock. I'll just let you in. So anyway, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, so it, this road goes like this, and it's gradually sloping up. And But then there's another way to go up, and that's for mountain climbers, and they go practically straight up. They zigzag to the top. Now, what we want, what we try to do with kids these days, and we take them and we say, okay, let's get to the top. Let's get to the top. And it's the most arduous up, you know, straight up kind of a, like we expect them to be like these mountain climbers. No, no, no. Take the scenic route. Take the scenic route to learning. Take them and get them gradually going up a little bit at a time. See? And where it's hardly any effort at all. Now, at the top, we tell them, we tell them once we reach the top, the view from the top is so beautiful. 
and give them that vision. Give them a vision of what it's going to be like when they can pick up any book they want to and they can read. They can write anytime they want to to anyone and feel confident about their spelling. Give them a vision and then take the time to do things gradually to encourage them. Well, I think I've taken up enough of your time, so I'm going to let you go. Bye-bye.